Hello, hello, everybody. We're just waiting for all of you to be able to come in so you don't miss anything. So 56 now and climbing, we are expecting about 400 of you or maybe even more. So let's see how many finally get to spend their Thursday with us. Still climbing. Reach 100, then we can start. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're good. So good afternoon from our side of the world. And uh, to those of you joining us from Europe, good morning. And for those of you from joining us from other places, a very good day <laughs> to all of you. My name is Jenny Almako. I'm one of the regional coordinators of Euraxis ASEAN. And I'm joined here by my colleague, Dr. Susan Renzo Vasu. Uh, she will speak in a minute also about um, why we are here. Uh, and we'd like to welcome you to, to this session where we will get to learn about one of the programs of the Marie Skodowska Curie Actions. For those of you who have joined us before, or maybe even from yesterday, the Marie Skodowska Curie Actions fund excellent research and innovation and equip researchers at all stages of their career. And you get to learn new knowledge and skills through mobility across borders and exposure to different sectors and disciplines. For, for today, we are going to concentrate on the MSCA staff exchanges, which are aimed to promote innovative international and intersectoral and interdisciplinary collaboration in research and innovation. But before I introduce to you our speakers, I'd like to give the floor to my colleague who will explain to us why we are here and what, uh, what's in store for us in the next days as well. Susan? Thank you so much, Jenny. And yes, a very warm welcome from me as well. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background information, as Jenny has already said, the both of us are the regional coordinators for the Euraxis Worldwide Project here in Southeast Asia. Now, Euraxis is your gateway to the European research area. We are part of a global network that spans not only uh, 40 countries in Europe, but also links Europe to nine global research partners, including, of course, Southeast Asia. And our job is really to make sure that you are always informed about the opportunities that are available for you in Europe to advance your research career, to work with research collaborators, to find funding for your projects. We have um, started this European Research and Innovation Days about six years ago. So we are right in the middle of this year's European Research and Innovation Days in ASEAN. And this year, our topic is climate change and global health. So we had a lot of very exciting discussions already. We know that a lot of you are working on topics that are directly related to finding solutions to the climate change uh, challenge. And we know that you are looking for ways and means to exchange ideas with you being collaborators to work on the project um, together. So this is, I think, a fabulous, uh, very opportune moment for you to learn about this particular funding program. But afterwards, please, we have created a LinkedIn page where you can post your offers for research collaboration or your requests for research collaboration. Jenny, I think is at the moment posting in the chat the link to this group. We invite you to make use of that. And of course, our event only finishes on the 15th of December. So we have, I think, almost 15 more sessions in store for you. So hopefully you can meet us at other sessions in the future. But with this, I'll hand over back to Jenny. Thank you so much and have fun, everyone. Thank you very much, Susan. So so there you have it. So, you know, we have a lot of things in store for you. I mean, in the next weeks, we're going to also have uh, trainings in order for you to sharpen those skills um, as you do your research and as you do your excellent science. But for the moment, I have the pleasure of introducing to you our keynote or our expert for today. She has been working for the Research and Innovation Staff Exchange 
which was known to be RISE, but now staff exchanges for several years. And now she will continue also with the staff exchanges, as I said, within the Marie Skudov Security Actions. Her academic background is in business economics and social psychology, very interesting mix, which, is, which uh, gives an added value in supporting and guiding projects in their implementation in the social sciences and economics panel. Before I introduce her, I would like to to really uh, apologize if I murder her name, I'm very, very sorry, but I will try. Um, from, uh, from the Marie Skudov Security Actions, please help me welcome Alexandra Schoetz Sobchak. Did I do that? Did I do that justice, Alexandra? Perfectly, <laughs> perfectly, Jane. <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So thank you, Jen, for your kind uh, introduction and the invitation to, to participate uh, in this uh, particular event. I am very happy to be with you. Welcome everybody. So my name is Aleksandra Szczepczak and I am uh, from the executive, um, from the European Research Executive Agency. And I am here with you today, just to, uh, just a small technical issue. Okay, fine. So. Uh, and today I would like to present to you one of the funding scheme offered by the European Union to enhance the careers of researchers and to increase collaboration between organizations doing research. And here, as already underlined, I'm referring to the scheme of the staff exchanges within the framework of Marie Skłodowska Curie Actions. Uh, first of all, I would like to give you an overview of my presentation. So I would quickly frame the scheme of staff exchanges and its policy background so you can grasp the context under the framework program Horizon Europe. This will be followed by a more detailed explanation of the scheme itself. Then at the end, I will give you one example of a successful project within the research and innovation staff exchanges scheme called RISE to illustrate this. So, Next uh, slide, please. One more, please. And one more. <laughs> so the Staff Exchanges Action is a unique scheme within the framework program called Horizon Europe. So what is Horizon Europe? Horizon Europe is the Union, Union, uh, European Union's key funding program for research and innovation. It will last from 2021 until 2028 with a total budget of 95.5 billion euro. It addresses climate change, helps to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and boosts the European Union's competitiveness and growth. And here in this slide, you can see where the Marie Skodowska Curie actions are. They are placed under pillar one, under excellent science. Next slide, please. So as you can see in the slide, and very briefly, there are five main Marie Skłodowska Curie actions, which are doctoral networks, with target doctoral, which target doctoral programs uh, supporting research in academia and uh, other sectors, postdoctoral fellowship, which is supporting the careers of individual researchers and promoting excellence, a co-fund, which supports regional, national, and international doctoral and postdoctoral programs through co-funding, MSCA and Citizens, which brings science closer to the uh, public um, with the European Researchers' Night, and the staff exchanges, the main topic of today's presentation. So this scheme is supposed to promote knowledge collaboration between organizations and share practices in the context of a research project by Research Mobility. Next slide, please. So looking back at the impressive results of Marie Skodowska Curie Actions in the previous framework program Horizon 2020, with a budget of 6.2 billion euros, more than 65,000 researchers were supported, of which 37% were coming from outside of the European Union. Additionally, more than 1,000 doctoral programs were funded. Marie Skodowska actions are not restricted to academic or public uh, research organizations, but very much encourage the participation of private sector. So as you can see here, more than four and a half thousand companies received funding through Marie Skodowska Curie actions. 
In our effort to increase gender balance within the scientific world, we obtained almost balanced number of researchers funded. So 42% of researchers were female, which is a great result. Next slide, please. So what is actually the staff exchange uh, exchanges scheme about? I'm sure you are curious about it to learn more details and I will now uh, present, present them to you. So staff exchange scheme is a successor of the research and innovation staff exchange scheme known as RISE under Horizon 2020. The staff exchanges action funds short-term international and intersectoral exchanges of staff members involved in research and innovation activities of participating organizations. Staff exchanges scheme has the following main objectives. As for the other Marie Skodowska Curie actions, it is based on a bottom-up approach covering all fields of science. Staff exchanges scheme mainly supports the mobility of researchers at all stages of their career, either experienced or early stage careers, uh, researchers. I will come back to it later a bit. Contributing to the mobility of research and innovation staff in three dimensions, international, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary, as already Jane uh, mentioned before. The mobility of staff, which takes place through the exchanges, promotes the knowledge transfer between participating organizations. It is expected that staff participating in the scheme brings back to her or his organization the knowledge acquired during the secondment. So not only the staff in mobility does establish new networks and reinforces existing ones, but also the participating organizations settle and strengthen collaborations towards the common goals of the project. They also promote long lasting collaborations that often go beyond the duration of the project itself. So the scheme promotes cooperation across the globe as participation to staff exchanges action is not limited to the European organizations only. Next slide, please. So what triggers the participation in the staff exchanges action? So there is an added value for both, for the staff members and for the organizations. For the staff members, it is an excellent opportunity to acquire new skills and competences, which often go beyond of their field of expertise. On top, they gain experience of working in another country within different cultures. What is uh, interesting to share with you is that staff participating in the RISE scheme confirmed that the participation in a RISE project helped them to increase their employability, to have a promotion and to improve their career prospects. In addition, it also increased their visibility, for example, through increased number of papers written. And finally, these experiences helped to solidify existing networks and also to build new ones, which is the key for researchers' careers as we advance towards an international, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary scientific world. And for the participating organizations, they benefit from the transfer of knowledge. Their staff returns to, uh, to the organization with improved skills and knowledge, which is a, ve a value added for the organizations. Also, by hosting staff from other organizations, the staff benefits from another perspective and knowledge from the hosted staff. So this works both ways, as you can see. By working towards the same goals with other organizations, either academic or not academic in the project, the organization establishes and reinforces collaborations in the three dimensions, international, intersectoral, and interdisciplinary. It ultimately will enhance its own research and innovation capacity. Staff exchanges projects can turn the ideas of both researchers and organizations into products, prototypes, processes, and services. Next slide, please. So who can participate in the staff exchanges scheme? Basically, the staff exchanges proposals should be presented by, by a consortium of several participating organizations coming from both academic and non-academic sector. By academic sector, I mean here the higher education and research organizations entities, and by a non-academic sector, I mean here uh, companies including small and medium enterprises, non-governmental organizations, and other entities such as museums or foundations. But it's not limited to that. Hmm. While there is a no maximum number of participants, 
there is a minimum of number of three participants located in three different countries, two of which need to be located in the European Union member state or a Horizon Europe associated country. If all participating institutions are from the same sector, then there should be at least one organization from a third country, which is not a, an EU a member state nor Horizon Europe associated country. So besides the two organizations located in the EU member state or Horizon Europe associated country, participant, participants can come from uh, anywhere in the world. Next slide, please. <coughs> So secondments from beneficiaries and from associated partners located in low and middle income third countries listed in the Horizon Europe program guide, uh, which you can find uh, in the funding and tender portal are eligible for funding. So eligible secondments from associated partners located in, uh, in low and middle income third countries are to be claimed by the beneficiaries with whom they exchange staff. This should be regulated in the partnership agreement. Each beneficiary is, uh, as they are uh, grant recipients, are responsible for the technical and financial implementation of the project. Secondments from countries like Canada, USA, Japan, Singapore, South Korea, for example, are not automatically eligible for funding and therefore by default entities from those countries have to participate at their own cost. They may, however, receive funding exceptionally if the granting authority considers that their participation is essential for implementing the project. Next slide, please. So the eligible uh, exchanges are basically between academic and non-academic entities within European Union associated countries and vice versa. Between academic entities, if the exchanges are between uh, entities in the European Union or associated countries and third country partners and between non-academic entities if the exchanges are between organizations located in the EU or um, associated countries and third country partners. And this is now a novelty in the staff exchanges pro, uh, program. If the secondments are interdisciplinary, they can take place between the same sector within the participants coming from the European Union or associated countries. However, those interdisciplinary secondments cannot exceed one third of total secondments of the project of this kind. And please note that secondments uh, from uh, between third country partners are not eligible, uh, not possible, sorry. Next slide, please. So uh, now that we have seen the type of exchanges, we will drift to who can be seconded. In principle, any type of staff involved in research and innovation activities, principally researchers, but also administrative staff, managerial staff, or technical staff. Regarding the researchers, they can participate at any stage of their, their career. They can be either early stage researchers with no PhD or less than four years of scientific experience or experienced researchers with PhD or more than four years of scientific experience. The staff should be engaged in research and innovation activities at the organization for at least one month prior to the secondment. Next slide, please. So how is the EU funding distributed? The staff exchanges scheme is very straightforward. It is based on, as we called a unit cost, meaning here that one unit is one month of secondment achieved. This means that per month of a secondment completed, the organization receives 4,600 euro, of which 2,300 euro are allocated to the staff participating in the secondment to cover travel and accommodation. Please note that researchers continue receiving salary from their organization during the secondment. The other 2,300 euro are split in the following way. So 1,300 euro goes to the research training and networking pocket, for example, for organizing a workshop, purchasing materials or consumables for the lab. And the remaining 1,000 euro 
aims to cover the organization of the secondment, the management of the project and indirect costs. Next slide. So to summarize, staff exchanges projects have a duration of maximum of four years with a maximum of 360 months of secondment per project, which is an equivalent to 1.66 million euro. The secondments can last between a minimum of one month and a maximum of 12 months. The duration of the secondment is counted from the day of departure to the day of return. Uh, compared with the previous framework, no secondments between the same sectors within Europe are allowed as long as they are interdisciplinary, up to one third of total implemented secondment funded by the European Union. The funding is based on the unit cost, which is 4,600 euro per month of secondment, which is split in half for the staff and half for the organization. The average amount uh, per call allocated to uh, staff exchanges is 75.5 million euro. Uh, I will now briefly present you the key aspects about the proposal submission and evaluation. So I am quite sure that you are already attracted by the features of the staff exchanges action. And please note that RICE had the highest success rate from all the Marie Skłodowska Curie actions, which was around 25%. So how to apply for funding? All calls under Horizon Europe are published in the funding and tender opportunities portal. You have it here uh, in this slide. You can find a link uh, below, which will directly lead you to the current open call. And first of all, you will need to find a respective call. You, if you follow the link, you will get there directly. You will have to sign in and register your organization, which will receive a registration number called PIC, which stands for Participant Identification Code. And you will need to find your partners and form a consortium. I am sure you are wondering how to find partners. There are several ways. I'm sure that also the other speakers in the panel will mention it to you. So I will refer for sure here to your access that they have a possibilities and platform where you can search for partners. And you also can do so when you enter this link, uh, which I presented here for the open call. You will have also the possibility to, first, uh, to search for partners there. Uh, for the submission of the proposal, your organization, if coming from a third country, will need to attach an up-to-date letter of commitment, which will be signed by the legal representative to demonstrate a real and active participation in the proposed network. And then, as the whole consortium, you just apply. The process is quite uh, simple and straightforward, and everything is done online. Next slide, please. So when you will follow this link that I just mentioned, you will get a lot of reference documents and you can uh, consult them before applying. So there are the following documents, guide for applicants, um, Marie Skłodowska Curie Action Work Program and Annexes, proposal templates, frequently asked questions, model grant agreement, an online manual on how to submit an application, etc. Next slide, please. So once you will start to apply as a consortium and draft your proposal, you will need to complete the administrative form on the consortium composition and EU funding request. This is uh, included in the part E. In the part B, however, you will elaborate your proposal following the lines of the three main criteria, which are excellence, impact, and implementation. Next slide. So here you can see a very detailed slide uh, with the evaluation criteria, which are excellence, impact, and implementation, as I already mentioned, that are used for evaluating the proposals. This chart is crucial if you are preparing a proposal, so you can highlight the most important points in your proposal, which will be evaluated against these criteria by the experts. 
This table is included in the work program for Marie Skodowska Curie Actions for 2021-2022, and which you can consult under the funding and tenders portal under the respective call that I already mentioned. So the staff exchanges call for 2021 has already been opened in October and it will be closed on the 9th of March, 2022. The total budget that it's allocated for this call is 72.5 million euro. The next call will take place in 2022 around more or less the same uh, dates with a slight, uh, slightly higher budget. So I think now we are coming to the nice part of the presentation. I will present you a success story and I am very proud uh, to tell you that this is a project within my portfolio, uh, which will unfortunately, unfortunately I say finish soon. It's a very successful project. It's called ICIT which stands for Institutions for Knowledge uh, Intensive Development, Economics and Regulatory Aspects in Southeast Asian Transition Economies. So the participants are coming from the academic sector only. The coordinator is from the Italian University of Technology from Estonia. There is another beneficiary participating from the associated country from University of Lausanne from Switzerland. And we also have in this project three um, third country partners, which are National University of Laos, Ho Chi Minh City University of Law from Vietnam, and Royal University of Law and Economics from Cambodia. So the purpose of this project was to understand the cause and consequence consequences of the differences in the evolution of knowledge intensity of economics with particular focus on transition countries in South East Asia. The project is a joint effort of uh, Swiss and Estonian University economics and law researchers with transition studies experience from Eastern Europe and their fellow researchers from Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia with thorough insight into the institutional context in their societies. Regarding the career perspectives, the project clearly improves research skills of the individuals and has an impact on gradual research capacity building of the participating universities. In addition, it provides fruitful collaboration and knowledge transfer and raises awareness of the role of institutional efficiency and knowledge intensity for development among the participants. Regarding the development of lasting collaboration, the project is aiming at incorporating the research outputs into local, national, international policy, as well as training uh, curricula in the longer perspective. For example, the Estonian and Swiss participants had, among other objectives, a specific focus on developing a PhD program in economics and business at the Asian partner universities with a great success. The ICIT project has a very, uh, it's a very successful project and it implemented nearly 100% of their planned secondments because uh, RICE and also the staff exchanges, uh, the main focus is here on the secondments. This project will finish, as I said already this year. However, the established collaboration will continue. Perhaps the consortium will succeed in obtaining another grant when I'm really happy for them. And uh, to finish my presentation, I would just like to present you with this nice quote of Marie Skodowska Curie. So nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now it's time to understand more so that we may fear less. I wish you really a big success uh, in applying and finding uh, partners, grounding a consortium, applying and having a great project. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexandra, for that very comprehensive presentation. And we are having an exciting chat room right now. There's a lot of questions, as you can imagine. So before I let you go, I hope you don't mind. I'll, I'll ask questions here. Um, first is uh, from, there's no name here, but the question is, can you please elaborate again? Uh, again, on the minimum requirements to form a staff exchange consortium. How many partners from the EU and associated countries are required before a third country partner can join? Mm. 
Yes, so there are uh, indeed uh, minimum requirements. Just a second, I think I will go back to the slide. Maybe we can see it together. I think it was under the consortium composition. Yes, so I don't know if we can put the slide maybe on. It was slide number 10. Hold on, I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> I'm also con controlling this thing. Yeah. <laughs> PowerPoint. So there is actually, as I already mentioned, no uh, maximum number of participants. We have a consortia which are really uh, very different. I think the average number of participants are maybe around eight, 10, I would say. I have also a project in which I have even 24 partners. That's really, really a big amount. But there is a minimum uh, number of participants. So there must be uh, three uh, participants uh, in the project, which are located in three different countries, and two of which need to be located either in the EU member state or Horizon Europe associated country. And this is the minimum requirement that needs to be fulfilled. And Thank then Exactly. And then it, it, it's, it really depends. For example, in this project, the success story that I presented, we had indeed two um, beneficiaries. One was from the European Union member state from Estonia, and one was from the associated uh, country from Switzerland. And we had three uh, third country partners from the Asian uh, continent. So this was, yeah. this, this was possible in its a great uh, cooperation. And it was already enough to have a very good and a successful project. Can you explain, Alexander, what's the difference between a uh, member state and an associated country? We hear this a lot. And yes. what is a third country, the TCs? Exactly. So there is a difference. I mean, here, EU member states are the members who are part of the European Union. And the associated countries are associated countries that uh, are countries that uh, signed an agreement with the Horizon Europe. And uh, I don't remember now by heart, the list is quite long, but you will have there, for example, Norway, Switzerland, uh, Turkey, etc. There is a extensive list uh, that it's, uh, you can find it under work program. <clears throat> if you go to the call, you will get all the documents and there will be also this document work program with annexes and everything is explained where. So you will find all the countries which are eligible there. Yes, third countries. Exactly, yeah. so or, or other countries that are not uh, EU member states or not uh, associated to the Horizon Europe. But the whole list is there, everything is it's well explained. Great, and we will send those links, so don't worry, like after the session, we will send uh, with, with, of course, with your permission, Alexander will send the presentation and we'll send the links that she shared also before. And we'll send you basically everything that you need to do uh, so that you can jumpstart your application. We're actually also being joined by a lot of you uh, in Facebook and there's a question coming from there. As far as I understand, a country like Singapore could not get funds, but if a partner member from a European country would go to Singapore, is his or her or they, whatever pronoun you go to go with, staying funded from his or her or whatever pronoun, European institution for the mobility or not? So if the staff is coming from a European member state, it will have uh, the money allocated to the secondment and it will be funded in that, yes, in okay. Singapore. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And here's another question uh, from somebody inside the room, Leia. If the researcher is from the EU, but she or he or whatever pronoun works in a third country, for example, Korea, Japan, or China, um, is the application still possible and any special attention needed in this case? A sure, application is still uh, possible, but this person will be linked to the organization in Japan or these countries that were mentioned. So it can be a person that uh, is a, n uh, has a nationality of one of the EU member states. However, if this person is allocated with an organization in this, those countries, will participate as a third country uh, fellow. Yeah, thank you. And we have several questions from Simon. Uh, I'll take one uh, one here and then later on we can go back uh, to the others. Um, is the RISE project in the same for format as I Now Asia? This is running from Spain, France, and Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam. I am only an associated committee member since for AIT, Thailand was too late to join as main partner. 
Are you familiar? Uh, I don't think that I'm able to answer because I'm not familiar to the scheme, so I'm not sure if I can help here, but maybe uh, colleagues from your access can check the details about it. Yes, I, I'm I not think familiar with Susan, If you're familiar with, with that program, Susan. Otherwise, I just, I just looked at it. It is an Erasmus uh, program, so this is a little bit different. I think it's more focused towards capacity building and uh, uh, improving teaching skills. So it's a, this is a, a little bit more different. Um, I think the staff exchanges are more focusing on the actual research. Exactly. So there's, there, there's, a, there's a little bit of a difference there. Thanks, right. Susan, yeah. mm -hmm. So there's still um, some questions coming in, but I'd like to take this opportunity, to, opportunity now to bring our other important guests with us so that this will be a bit more of a interactive active session as well. So I will bring in them one by one. First off, uh, we have someone from Thailand. She's from Chiang Mai University. Uh, she finished her Master of Engineering from Swinburne University of Technology in Australia and her Doctor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering and Management from Tokyo Institute of Technology. Currently, she is an assistant professor at Chiang Mai University, and she participated in an MSA RISE project called Industry 4.0 for SMEs, or Smart Manufacturing and Logistics for SMEs, in an X to order and mass customization environment. And again, uh, please uh, forgive me if I um, you know, mispronounce your name, but very much welcome to this session. Thank you so much for joining us. Assistant Professor Korakot Tipayawong, thank you so much. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself uh, very briefly uh, to, to, uh, to, to this session, and then we can move forward to the other speakers as well. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you very much, Jenny, to, uh, for inviting me for this important event. This is my first time sharing my experience among our researchers, and I'm happy to be here. So uh, I'm from the Faculty of Engineering, Chiang Mai University. I'm running the SME 4.0 project because in each um, project, they will have the nickname because the full name of the project is pretty long. So we have like the synonym of that, like SME 4.0. For this project, we run for um, from 2017 and should be end by 2020. But from the COVID situation, that's why we had to extend our project like one and one year. And I, I just heard from our partner that we have like another half years to, to um, continue our project. So briefly, I'm from the industrial engineering and I'm working for the SME, a lot of SME in, in Thailand. So this project is pre uh, pretty suitable for, for our research context in Chiang Mai University. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. For yeah. Production, right? Yes, thank you, thank you. And our next speaker, I'll bring, I'll, I'll keep you here uh, so that we are, it's, it's more fun. <laughs> our next speaker, um, she is a good friend of mine. Uh, we've known each other for quite some time because I'm also chair of the Marie Curie Alumni Association in Southeast Asia. I, I also did my Marie Curie some years ago, but our speaker, I mean, she's, she's one of the active ones really um, in, in MCAA. She is an academic staff at the School of Computing, Faculty of Engineering, University Technology Malaysia. I hope I pronounced it right. She's a research fellow at UTM Big Data Center and an active member of the Virtual Vision and Visualization Research Group. And she is, of course, the country representative of the Marie Curie Alumni Association in Malaysia. So it's nice to welcome you again, Dr. Norhaida Modswaib. So Dr. Norhaida, welcome, welcome. Okay, thank you, Jenny, for a very good introduction. Um, um, let me share some slides because uh, the project name is quite mouthful actually. So it's clear, I think, because um, very short uh, presentation, I hope. Okay, so um, I was involved in uh, Horizon 2020 MSCA RISE, uh, Research Innovation and Staff Exchange uh, Program. Uh, my name is Nurhaida Muhammad Suib. You can contact me via my email or also on my Facebook and everything. And I'm also, um, apart from uh, my work at University of Technology in Malaysia in School of Computing, Faculty of Engineering, I'm also an active member, as Jenny said, in the Marie Curie Alumni Association uh, and also the Malaysia Country Representative. 
So our previous project uh, in Horizon 2020, it's the MSCA RISE project. Uh, currently, it's known as the Staff Exchanges. This is the project number 691215. Uh, it runs from 2016 to 2019, four years a, um, period. And um, the full name is High Dimensional Heterogeneous Database Animation Techniques for Southeast Asia Intangible Cultural Heritage Digital Content. So it is aiming at using uh, computer graphics, artificial intelligence, and also mathematics to preserve the intangible cultural heritage uh, in the region. Okay, and uh, this is our uh, website. You can also visit the website to get more um, information and also uh, available method and data that you can use. And as um, uh, Associate Professor Kurakut uh, mentioned just now, uh, we usually have this uh, long name for the project, but we need also to get an acronym. So our project is called NEH. Okay, so the team members uh, from EU, the coordinator is from Bournemouth University, and we have another university from France and a research uh, institute from France. So these three are from uh, European uh, member states. And we have partners from uh, Southeast Asia, University of Technology Malaysia, Chiang Mai University, Vietnam National University, and also Kanto University from Vietnam. So how do we uh, involve, how, did get, how do we get, did get involved with the project? It's actually by, uh, we receive invitation from the coordinator, very lucky, okay? Because uh, um, we got the shortcut and we responded accordingly. We worked together in order to produce a, um, a suitable um, proposal. And um, uh, we get to get together, meet all the members, and uh, it ended in 2019. And from there, we managed to get um, exposure and we get to widen our network of uh, researchers. Uh, so in short, I think, Jenny, that's all for the introduction. Thank you very much, uh, Haida. Really an interesting uh, program. Um, and uh, I'm sure, you know, even now, like you are, you are also preparing for something else, for another, for another project. So thank you. I'll bring in our next speaker. Um, she, is, she received her 2002 PhD with a specialization in biochemical engineering from the Department of Chemical Engineering in Drexel University in, US, in the United States in 1996. And she has a master's in science in chemical engineering, Department of Chemical Engineering, again, in, in the USA. And she did her bachelor's of science in biotech from the Faculty of Technology uh, University in, in Thailand. And um, she is with us to talk to us also a little bit about her RISE project. So please, as Associate Professor Sorada Kanokpanot, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, uh, thank you for having me, uh, you know, give me a chance to meet you all today and to, you know, have a chance to tell you all about my, uh, you know, I'm very proud of this project, actually. Uh, we call Remix. Okay, we are the multidisciplinary group of people. We try to do the impossible, I would say. It's a tissue engineering and drug delivery base. And we want that to, you know, uh, get it to apply re in, in real life in, in Asia, especially in Thailand. Uh, we um, actually, uh, this is me and my friends, Ripon, we are all uh, biomaterials or, you know, we are basic. Uh, chemical engineering, and the key person is actually the ladies over here, Professor uh, Antonella Motta from University of Trento, Italy, and Professor Luis Ri, he is from uh, University of Mindio in Portugal. So we just kind of friends in, in because we go everywhere to the conference and we talk to each other a lot. So, and then they just, you know, give me an email, let's write something together. And then we just, you know, wrote something in 2016. In 2017, we start the remix program, okay? Uh, then we do all these activities. 
a lot. And uh, we are, of course, uh, the partner, uh, which is Chulalongkorn University. And we have the second one, Man uh, Mongolian University of Science and Technology in Mongolia. And the uh, Chonbok University in Korea is, uh, I think they use their own funding, but they want to get in the groups and get recognized. So it just, you know, uh, we have uh, multidisciplinary terms uh, teams at Jilalongkorn University from chemical engineering, biochemical, uh, biomedical engineering, pharmaceutical science, and medicine, and the great support from my student and staff for my uh, research project to run everything. And uh, we do a lot of uh, public uh, dissemination and communication during this four years. For example, we have uh, the website of Remix and the Facebook, you know, to, to you know, disseminate all the activity that we've done. And also even student life during the exchange is very, very fun to read. So I, I encourage you, if you want to see how do we run uh, the project with a lot of fun, just you know, visit our website over here. And needless to see that my student had a lot of, a lot of fun in Thailand and also in Portugal and in Italy. It's beautiful in Trento. Okay, uh, we have the important uh, public dissemination, which is a summer school in tissue engineering and regenerative medicine that we took take turns to uh, different countries, countries. But last year, uh, since we cannot travel, so we have the last one in South Korea, in South Korea next, uh, next year, which we're gonna close the project. <laughs> I, do I talk very fast because I have many things to, to say. So my key takes away is the red one. It's very fruitful for your student, do it. You know, I know I'm, I'm so tired because I'm not uh, administrative people. I, I'm just a one man working admin. You know, I have to do everything, draft the, uh, you know, draft the, the letter, do invitation, do certification and everything. Uh, visa, recommendation, but it's worth it for your student because it's a life changing experience, especially for Thai students. I think, I think this is very good. And um, uh, what uh, the last point, I think I, I wrote everything out, but might not have time, okay? You have to keep a lot of uh, good record on, 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 uh, on evidence, on the story, research and life during the second month because it will give you the good, very nice deliverable. And I give you uh, why do you have, you have to keep everything. And one more thing that I would like you to consider before you know doing the research, the two ways equal exchange in everything between Europe and Asia is very important because you cannot send only Asian students to Europe. You want Europe, European students to come here because um, uh, you know the big chunk of your student will get benefit when you know, uh, the people come to Asia. For example, the people who will come and stay for, uh, with you for six months or three months, something like that, instead of sending one of your students go there. So eco exchange is very important. Okay, um, after uh, the evaluation, we get the second phase, we get approved for the second phase of the project called SHIP. Because the first page of uh, the first phase of the project is kind of very rich in research. It's a medical research. So we want it to be really applied to uh, industry and translate to you know hospital or something. So that's why we get the new project called shaping innovation products for sustainable tissue engineering strategy that we have the first kick off meeting uh, last month and it will run uh, until August 2025. And we expand the members to, uh, you know, the same partner, which is the, the same head of the project, University of Trento. And we have a new University of Birmingham from UK. And uh, we have University of Sydney, Australia to come in. We also have some people from Malaysia, National University of Malaysia also. I think. This is all I'm gonna say in the first part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that. Um, it's, it's a really, and congratulations 
on your <laughs> second uh, second grant. So that's that's amazing. I want to go back uh, very quickly to Assistant Professor Coraco because I think she has some slides as well. So, but let's keep it brief so we can also have like these exchanges also from uh, from the people in the room. So, yes, please. Professor Koraka, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Jenny, for inviting me again. So sorry for my misunderstanding, because I think that uh, it should be only introduction, just a brief introduction of myself. So for my project, um, actually here, um, we have the project called SME 4.0. Uh, the project here, we focus on the smart manufacturing for SME. Smart logistics and smart organization. We have all together three modules, and as as you can see here, uh, we start from two thousand seventeen, and this is our um, key objective of that. We have like eight partners and six countries uh, involving. We have all together two hundred and twelve person months, and forty four plus researcher, and we plan to have like around 78 segments, but right now it's more than that. And um, the partner of the, uh, the partner in, in this project, the leader of the project is the Free University of Bolzano in Italy. And we have a very lovely um, project uh, partner from, from Montana University Leoben in Austria and Technical University of Cosise. And we also already also have the um, industry partner Elcom from Slovakia, and we have like uh, external, uh, not from Europe, it's from, uh, they are from the United States, was the Polytechnic Institute and MIT. We have one from India and we are the one from Chiang Mai University. This is our research, uh, research consortium for the SME 4.0 project. And as you can see that for our project, we have run like two modules, the first, model is from 2017 to 18 and the second one from 19 to 20 but the theme of the of the research is basically on the SME 4.0 how to improve SME to be in the 4.0 era so we include like manufacturing logistic and uh, organization model <clears throat> uh, this is a question that Jenny gave me before that how can we apply to, from, uh, to this project. It's like by chance because we have a double degree logistic engineering with um, OVGU and Magdeburg. The German, the German guy introduced us to Italian guys like um, Free University of Bolzano because they also have the double degree together. At that time, I think the Magdeburg, they don't have enough staff to run the settlement. So they uh, introduced this project to Free University of Bolzano and then they introduced me, introduced us to, to, to know each other. And from that phase, we have like a short meeting, we develop proposal together and we try to find partners together. So in Thailand, we also have the industry partner like four or five working with us on this project. But the main one is from the Slovakia who is in the contract with the, with the EU. Very nice. And as you can see that, um, Professor Dominic Matt from, from Free University of Bolsano, and we have like a very really good guy, Erwin Rausch from, from University of Bolsano. He is very good project coordinator and manager. So we have like manager from, from each country and we talk together. And for me, I'm, I'm the project leader from the CMU. As you can see that I, I, I heard that before um, about the involvement of the female researcher. In this project, I noticed that a lot of people from European side, they are all like male and we put like a female side of the researcher there. So we have like more than 12 researcher, female researcher doing the second men doing the exchange. So this is very good opportunity for us to, to, to be in a part of this project. <clears throat> and the key takeaways, this is very important. I feel that I got lots of new friends from, from this project. You know, if you are friends with them, in the future, you can do more than research. You can send your student, you can do core research, you can together write the new project. So we have like activities for meeting, we have uh, them 
from Europe coming to, to us here. And right now we have next door guys from Austria that's coming for the second men. And right now my students, five of us uh, are in Italy and two of them are in um, Austria. So seven of them are together right now. They are not in Thailand. So they do the second men right now. And from the COVID situation, we do have a lot of like the um, seminar together, online, offline together. And we also have a good time to do, to run the, the good activity together. That means you have like forever friend because you have, if you have similar chemistry working with other people. So you're happy to work on this project. I'm very happy with, with this. Apart from this, close relationship with um, other researchers. We also have a lot of publications as another outcome of the project. So for the project, um, I think at first time we, we promised that we should have around 40 publications as a result of the project. But by the end of last year, we have like 150 publications and the CMU contributes more than 40 publications. I think it's a big portion from, from our side. To, to contribute to this project. And we also have the books. So we have two books from 2020 and 2021. This is another part of the, the project. So if you're interested, if you can do, go to, to do the free download, this is um, available for everyone. And for the next project, we actually love this uh, program. So we talk together that we should submit more proposal to the next one. So it's, it's called SME 5.0. So we talk about this a bit later on. So Jenny, this is my, my part. So we wait for the next questions. Thank you very much uh, for that presentation. So I, I, there are a lot of key takeaways uh, also for me, you know, among all of you are part of this, uh, of this talk. And first is really like, you know, you can meet the, your, your next partner in a conference. And that's very important. So, you know, um, and you, you, you bring each other together, you know, maybe you, you share a coffee um, and then, uh, you know, you, you can uh, really, you know, have something. <laughs> do something and, and have many projects together. Another thing is it also takes maybe one guy or one woman, you know, uh, you know, to, to introduce you to someone who wants to be part of this conversation as well. So that's a very good point. Um, I just wanted to, to ask all of you, because unfortunately we are running out of time. What would be, um, because there's a question here, uh, yeah, here, maybe first for Alexandra, um, if we are in third countries, uh, say three participating ASEAN countries and other two EU teams, the fund granted will be awarded to any of ASEAN participants or otherwise. So please, can you please explain? So where does the fund go? And I, uh, while you're doing answering that, I have to charge my, my laptop. Hold on. Yes, so um, thank you for the question. So first of all, you will have to be uh, awarded the grant as a whole consortium. So the whole consortium will receive the grant for the project and the main person, the coordinator that is in charge of this project will then uh, distribute the funds accordingly. It will depend on what is actually um, the project about and how the um, redistribution of secondments is uh, meant, but all this has to be really well um, already explained in the proposal. The proposal has to be assessed by the experts and only then um, the best proposals will be ranked and these proposals will then get uh, funded. Okay, thank you so much for that, Alexandra. There's, here's another question as well from Chun Yan Hao. If we are in third, uh, sorry, uh, do we do we have to plan for talent recruitment for PhD master in the proposal planning or the team composition must be of the existing postgraduate students? Can you shed any light, any one of you? When you were planning the, the recruitment process, did you think already of, you know, having a, you know, PhD master student so that, you know, you can do this project? This is what I understand. I hope that's, uh, that's correct, Chun Yan. Uh, can I... Can Yes, okay, because from our experience, we need uh, during the proposal present uh, preparation, we need to also list out the possible uh, postgraduates and also staff who will be sent for second month. But however, uh, the list may change according to the current situation. I mean, you can um, you have this plan, but probably that 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 particular person has uh, graduated or something, you can uh, replace it with 
uh, someone with similar position. That's from our experience. Thank you. Thank you, Haida. And uh, as well for uh, Professor Korakot, uh, do you have any advice also in how, how you formed, how did you form your team? How did you decide, okay, we are forming this RISE project in, uh, in our university and this is the composition of the team? Okay, um, thank you for the question. Actually, for, for my side, I have, um, uh, I have um, like a chat meeting with, with our staff in Faculty of Engineering. Because I'm from Industrial Engineering, so we ask Mechanical Engineering, Computer Engineering to, to join us. Like We have the second man project to Europe for two, three, four months. So if you have your PhD student, can you, send, uh, can, can you ask them if they like to join? And actually on the first phase, I didn't actually plan that because um, on the first phase, we put like me, myself going six months, my student three months, but actually we cannot do that because we have a lot of works here in Thailand. So first we got 54 man months. After that, we do the separation, like do the small slot for, for other people. Uh, at the first page, we have six people doing second man, but later on we have like 20, 20 staff doing second man like seven PhD students and 13 staff. So it's very happy, everyone happy because they like go two months, one month and everyone happy with that. Yeah, that's wonderful to spend a month or two in Europe and then also expanding your research, it's wonderful. And Professor Serrata, was it, was it the same for you? I mean, you already have the second. Um, how did you move from the first to the second? And how did you uh, keep this the, the team and expand it as well? I'm very, very curious about that. I think I think trusting and very very important because I knew Antonella, the head of the project from uh, 2010, and we are like clicking right away because we have the same way of working. And then she start to introduce me to her uh, network, like from Korea, Mongolia, and from very important people is actually Professor Louis Lee because he has the biggest tissue engineering lab in Europe, I would say. So he has kind of a, a little bit of power, a little bit, and uh, he can top. He can top down everything if if you want anything. But on on Thailand side, I I have to you know use a lot of my my good friend because I don't have time to follow them. Okay, you have to submit this, submit that. So we have to look at the you know the best friend, uh, my PhD student who happen to be multidisciplinary. So I have my. Uh, uh, you know, the doctor as my student. So I think I'm lucky for to have those people to, to get because I don't have to follow, you know, the deliverables or something like that. And uh, the student who can go is the PhD student. And number two, uh, what do you call a research uh, assistant. Wow. You, you, you can send you a research assistant who have master degree too, but you have to rec uh, you have to certify for that for abilities, something like that. How long have they done have they doing the research already? Something like that. So thank you. Thank you very much. And you know, I'm a great believer in that you know success comes when you also, you know, uh, help people and uh, succeed themselves and you know then the kind of success that you get is, is much bigger because you're amplified right so and I think that's the experience with you assistant professor Korakot of course my good friend Dr. Haida and associate professor Surada and Alexandra you know like you you have been very generous with your time and expertise as with everybody unfortunately we are running out of time uh, and we still have 11 questions actually in the Q&A so here is our promise um, we will be keeping in touch with all of you we will give you the presentations as well with the permission of our experts. Um, and of course, we will be in, uh, we have a LinkedIn group. So if you are already forming this, you know, these partnerships, you want to collaborate, please do join our LinkedIn group so that you can start these conversations. Also, of course, the Euraxis page has a lot of um, offers as, as well from institutions. And you also have like the funding portal that you have to look at and also to, to, get, to, to get to know uh, more about the program. In, uh, we are available in all of the social media channels well save for TikTok we are on Facebook on LinkedIn on Twitter and uh, also we have an email asian at uraxis.net so please get in touch with us thank you so much to you all you know what I noticed also this is a very powerful panel of women in science so it is amazing yeah. 
So thank you. And of course, Alexandra, thank you again. Have a good day, everybody. We will be in touch soon. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Edward. Goodbye and good luck. Bye.